Good morning. Here we go. Thank you for being here. This is usually one of our uh, more special chapel services, and we're so glad you are here to listen and watch the presentation on Ramadan and the Muslim faith. And we would like to thank our students who are leading today's service, Ekra Jatoy, Bisar Rat. Ratsi, he had, I had to practice rolling the R. I didn't do that so well. And Zanura K. Kovusova. So thank you. And also assisting them today are members of our international student ambassadors. And I'd like to recognize Mallory Mixon. Is she here? You want to wave at us? Okay. Mallory, thank you. Avery Sanderson. Thank you. And Sedante Miles. And with that, I will turn it over to our students who are leading today. Good afternoon, centenary people. Um, welcome to a quick crash course on Ramadan and Islam by um, me and my colleagues. Uh, so we're just going to begin with talking about the five pillars that make Islam our religion. Uh, well. I didn't introduce myself. My name is Visar Ratsi. I am a pre-law student, sophomore here at Centenary. I'm an, inter an international student from Kosovo. Um, anyway, let's get into this. Um, the five pillars of Islam. We will start with the first one, which is the declaration of the uh, Shahada. So basically the translation to the Shahada would be, I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship, that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. So this is called the Declaration of Shahada, and it's a statement that carries a lot of power because it's the first step that people take in order to become Muslim. It's the foundation of our beliefs, and it holds a special place in each of our hearts. The Declaration of Shahada is for any individual that sincerely is seeking out Islam or for um, people that uh, already are Muslim. So it's a statement that strengthens our religious integrity and our faith in which we call Iman, um, our uh, and our following and adherence to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The second pillar of Islam would be prayer. Uh, prayer is the best way to establish our connection with God, um, reciting the holy book Quran, and asking God for whatever we need. Prayer is something that was ordered to Muhammad. The, uh, a little bit of history of how uh, prayer was ordered to us is the Prophet received this revelation at the age of 40 while he was meditating in a cave. Um, an angel read to him the chapter in the Quran, Ikra, which means read, and the prophet hurriedly ran to his wife and laid in her lap while shaking and being scared and told her to cover him. At this time, God ordered him to stand up and pray. And ever since that time, we've been advised and obligated to pray to God five different times of the day, starting from the early morning until it's time to go to bed. This is the strongest means of keeping that divine link with God and maintaining that connection. Many of us know that prayer to be, um, is a means of tuning in and talking to God, and that is exactly what it means logistics, logistically as well, uh, linguistically. Back? Sorry. Sorry if, <laughs> if I'm blowing your ears out. Um, the third one is the giving of zakat. As one of the five pillars in Islam, zakat is a religious duty for all Muslims who meet the necessary criteria of wealth. It is described as a mandatory charitable con contribution. So 2.5% 2, 2 of your wealth, or 1 40th of your total wealth, um, is something that is paid from your money or belongings and things that you value. Um, so you will not re so in the Quran we learned that we will not reach the level of righteousness until we spend out of what we love. So this is an important point of how, how uh, we're supposed to spend our money in things that matter, basically, and give out for what we have. Um, giving what we value and what we, what we own and what we have in our possession and authority. When we give it to someone else to possess and own, this makes us love the fact of giving and helping others more than love, loving the possession in itself. Uh, one may call it sacrifice, but that is a system that has been set by uh, God, and you can give to those who are in need if you have something that is in surplus. 
The fourth pillar of Islam is Ramadan, so fasting, as we are doing now. Uh, Ramadan has been defined in the Quran in chapter 2, um, and it states, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed to people before you. Perhaps you may become of those who are righteous. Which lets us know that fasting has been here for the la uh, before even Prophet Muhammad and before Islam. Because this is something similar practicing that we see with Christians when uh, they practice Lent. It is a means of depriving ourselves to remember a sacrifice of someone else and to remember the greatness of God upon them. Fasting is defined as a voluntary deprivation for spiritual conditioning. Um, our voluntary depri de deprivation of ourselves, of eating, drinking, and intimacy with our partners, from sun up until sundown, with the means of coming closer to God. Uh, linguistically, scholars even mention that the word Ramadan comes from Ramda, which means to burn, heat, or fire, and it's a symbolization of burning off the sins. Uh, it is also mentioned that in this month, um, we don't this month is al always going to be a hot month, so like it's in the summer now. Um, but we don't see this as a month of starvation. Uh, for myself and other Muslims uh, who fast, we consider this as an opportunity to cleanse our hearts and get closer to God. And the fifth pillar is the performance of Hajj. So this is what it looks like. And nearly two million Muslims will gather in a holy city in Mecca in Saudi Arabia on August 9th for an annual pilgrimage known as the Hajj. It's a five day journey, once in a lifetime obligation for all Muslims who are physically and financial, financially able to undertake it. It is considered the fifth pillar of Islam practice. The millions of Muslims from around the world who meet each, other, uh, each year in Saudi Arabia dream, dress very simply to mask any differences in wealth and status. So women will wear uh, plain white dresses and headscarves, while men drape themselves with just seamless, unhemmed clothing. Uh, pilgrims start by declaring their intentions for the journey and then circling seven times around the Holy Kaaba, which is the black cube-shaped uh, house of God located at the center of the most sacred mosque in Mecca. Uh, we believe that, the, that a proper performance of the Hajj can absolve Muslim pilgrims of any previous sins, but it is up to God to judge whether uh, the pilgrimage was acceptable or not. Um, and now we're going to move on to the history of Ramadan. Hi, everyone. My name is Ikra Jatoy. I'm a senior here at Centenary. So I'm going to start off with talking about the history of Ramadan. So Ramadan is also known as the month of fasting. It is one of the most important months for all Muslims around the world. It's considered the most holiest and most sacred month in Islamic culture. Billions of Muslims will fast from dawn to dusk, and during this period, Muslims will abstain from drinking or eating it during that period. The word Ramadan comes from the Arabic word Ar-Ramaz, which means scorching heat. It is during this month that Muslims believe in the year 610 AD, the angel Gabriel appeared to the prophet Muhammad and revealed to him the Quran, which is the holy book for Muslims. That, that revelation, known as Laylatul Qadr, which is translated to night of power, is believed to have occurred during Ramadan. As a result, Muslims fast during this month as a way to commemorate that revelation. Fasting is also one of the five fundamental principles of Islam, as Bashar has mentioned. During this month, Muslims aim to grow spiritually and build stronger relationships with God. This is done by praying and reciting the Quran, making their actions inten intentional and selfless, and abstaining from gossiping, lying, and fights. We're supposed to avoid impure thoughts and bad behaviors during this time. It is supposed to be a time to practice self-restraint and self-reflection. Fasting is seen as a way to cleanse the soul and have empathy for those in the world who are hungry and less fortunate. Muslims will sponsor meals during this time to those in need and help or help out in food banks. The whole point is that we are giving back to the community in some sort of way and that we are reminded of our religious duty to help those who are less fortunate. It is also supposed to serve as a reminder and awareness of everything that God has provided in our lives. A lot of Muslims will give sadaqah, which is charity. It is separate from zakat um, in that it, it is voluntarily. It's done to please God, and it can be through a voluntary charitable act towards others, whether it be through generosity, love, compassion, or faith. 
These acts don't necessarily have to be physical or monetary, and it could be simple good deeds such as a smile or a helping hand, which are all acts of sadaqa. So now I'm going to move on and talk about the structure, the structure of Ramadan. Uh, the structure of Ramadan is fairly simple. As one of the five pillars of Islam, fasting during this month is mandatory for all healthy adult uh, Muslims. Children who have not yet reached puberty are exempt. The elderly, those who are physically or mentally incapable of fasting, pregnant women, breastfeeding mothers, and travelers are also exempt from the responsibility. And also, women who are going through their menstrual period abstain from fasting until they're finished, and then they're required to fast those days, uh, the days they lost outside of Ramadan at any time during the year. Um, about the structure, I have a lot of friends here at Centenary who haven't been exposed uh, to Ramadan before, and it's such a, a mind-blowing concept when they're like, you can't even drink water or eat anything, and I'm like, what about brushing your teeth, or how are you gonna survive without food or water for 30 days? And I'm like, we eat. <laughs> it's not that we're gonna fast 30 days nonstop, but we eat two meals, um, often with family and friends. Um, so the, uh, the first one is called suhoor, and it is before dawn, so before the sun comes up. And then the second meal is called iftar, uh, and it's just after sundown. So. Um, dusk till dawn. Basically, we can only eat when there's like nighttime. Um, during the day, observers take in nothing, so no food, no water, uh, although there are exceptions for people who can't maintain the fast for health or other reasons. Um, so during this time, and really always, we're required to eat food that is halal, meaning that it meets the Islamic um, dietary guidelines for what is permissible. Um, other than that, the food, is served, the food served is dictated by the culture and preference, so other cultures have different food. Um, it, they can vary very widely. Um, in Morocco, um, one might eat lentil soups, or in India, they, will eat, they would eat curry. And in Kosovo, we break our fast um, with a special kind of pita bread called uh, samuna. Um, and one thing that we all have in common to break the fast are dates that you can see in the middle. Um, most observers break their fast with dates because that is what the Prophet Muhammad did, and um, observers usually are eager to offer each other dates to break the fast as a gesture of friendship. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about the significance of the last one. So now I'm going to talk about the significance of the last 10 days, also known as Laylatul Qadr. So Laylatul Qadr is considered the holiest night of the year. Um, this was when the revelation would occur to the Prophet Muhammad um, by the angel Gabriel. Eventually, all the scripture of the Quran would be revealed during Ramadan. Now, one thing about Laylatul Qadr is that we don't know exactly when in Ramadan it falls under. It is believed that it occurred sometime in the last 10 days on an odd-numbered uh, night. So during the last night, during the last 10 days, it's going to either be on the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or 29th fast. And during those 10 days, a lot of people will enter itikaf, which is when they dedicate those last 10 days to absolute worship. They will stay in a mosque or isolate themselves in their house, and they will dedicate their time to praying. They will detach themselves from all materialistic items and spend their time worshiping. As it is said that those who end up praying on Laylatul Qadr, all their sin, past sins will be forgiven. However, to, do, to be able to do itikaf, one has to be fully devoted and serious, as it requires a lot from the person observing it. The revelation that occurred to the Prophet is actually where my name comes from, Iqra. For those who don't know, Iqra in Arabic means to read. So here is a revelation in Arabic. Uh, that was revealed to the prophet um, and the first word of the revelation is iqra so now i'm going to go ahead and recite the uh, the verses and then i'll do a translation after a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insanu min alaq iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi 'allama bil-qalam 
And now the translation is, Recite in the name of your Lord who created. Created man from a clinging substance. Recite in your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught men that which he knew not. Now I'm going to do another recitation. This um, verse talks about Layla Dal Qadr. I'm going to recite it and then Zainura will do the translation. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna Anzalnahu fi Layla Dal Qadr. Wa ma adraka ma Layla Dal Qadr. Layla Dal Qadr ee khayrun min alfi shahr. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سواء حيا حتى مطلع الفجر Translation of Laylatul Qadr Indeed, we send the Quran down during the night of decree and what can make you know what is the night of decree? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. I know this is a lot of reciting, but I want to recite something too. Uh, this is called the Surah Al-Fatiha, and it starts with أحوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستهين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. So the translation for this um, surah is in the name of God the most gracious the most merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment. It is you who we worship and upon you who we call for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed and not of those against whom there is anger, nor of those who are misguided. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff now. Um, we're going to talk about Eid al-Fitr, which is the holiday that comes uh, after Ramadan. It marks the end of Ramadan and uh, is celebrated during the first three days uh, after Ramadan. And it is a joyful day where many Muslims attend communal prayers together. So we fill up cities. Um, in the top left, that's um, in Albania. That's a city in Tirana where I grew up. That's the capital of Tirana and that's the main square of the city and how it fills up every year when we pray for um, this holiday. And it's just so amazing because there's, there's gonna be hundreds of thousands of people all across the city, all streets are closed, just praying everywhere. And it's just very, very special. Um, we block all movement and to execute this prayer. Um, after, af right after the prayer, we're required to all hug each other and uh, say Eid Mubarak, which means happy Eid. And we give candy and money to children and we visit our relatives around us. And by relatives, I don't mean just like my uncle or my aunt, like relatives in the Muslim community is like my mom's neighbor's cousin in like two cities away that we have to go visit and like sh share this holiday with. Uh, it's a holiday full of happiness and it brings our communities, families, friends, like everybody gets close together and it serves um, the, less inf um, the less fortunate in a very special way because it's also a day where we tend to um, give a lot of donations. Um, yeah, Rachel. So we, are, we also have another Eid, which happens almost two months after Eid al-Fitr. This one's called Eid al-Adha. Um, it is one of the two major Islamic holidays that are celebrated worldwide. Um, among Muslims. It occurs about two months after Eid al-Fitr and is considered the holiest Eid of the two. This Eid commences the end of Hajj, which is one of the five pillars of Islam, as Vassar has mentioned. That is when Muslims are obligated to perform pilgrimage at least once in their lifetimes in Mecca and Medina. Now, different countries around the world have different names for this celebration, but one common name is Qurban Eid. So Qurban means sacrifice, and this is the time where animals where Muslims will sacrifice an animal. 
The reason as to why we do this is because this holiday honors the willingness of Prophet Abraham to sacrifice his name Ishmael as an act of obedience to God's command. Muslims believe that in that moment before Prophet, Prophet Abraham would sacrifice his son, God had sent a lamb in place of his son, which was sacrificed instead. As a result, an animal, usually a sheep or a lamb, is sacrificed. And with that um, sacrificed meat, one third of that meat will be consumed by the family during this time. One third will be given to family and friends, and the last third will be given to the poor and needy. The goal is to ensure that every Muslim gets to eat meat during this time, and it allows for a celebration with a message of devotion, kindness, and equality. So both Eids have an Eid prayer, um, which occurs the morning of um, Eid at the mosque. So everyone gets dressed up in new clothes, and they attend the service and pray. Sweets and gifts are also given, and family members will visit, as, visit each other and spend time with each other, as Vassar has mentioned. So the act of giving money is called Eid in um, my culture, and basically what that means is that instead of getting presents, we get money on Eid. That's our equivalent of getting presents um, on Christmas Day. So some families will do gifts, but money is the most common thing uh, that is handed out. Okay, um, hello again. Um, this is Zainira from Tajikistan, and I will tell you about a few famous misconceptions about Ramadan that were partly also uh, were mentioned uh, by Visar. First one is, Ramadan is only about abstaining from food and drink, which is not true. Uh, I mean, partially true. On the contrary, the entire month of Ramadan is dedicated to Muslims uh, to be the very best versions of themselves, uh, both spiritually and physically. Um, while fasting is just a major part of Ramadan, um, it is also um, known for Muslims um, to encourage themselves to abstain from bad habits um, that are not necessarily good for them. Um, let's say, for example, smoking, drinking, or gossiping. So basically, the entire month of Ramadan is viewed as an opportunity for Muslims um, to, re to reset and reflect. Second one is everyone has to fast, um, which is pretty much was generalized. Um, or another common misconception is that fasting is necessary for everyone or for all the Muslims. The truth is that, um, the truth about with fasting is that um, it can be only perf be performed by people who are actually both fit mentally and physically uh, to fit or, or are just in general are physically able to do fasting. Uh, those who are sick, those who are menstruating or traveling, they can forego their uh, fasting for a day and then kind of make it up um, by fasting on another day. Uh, also, as was mentioned by um, Ikra, there's um, donation, um, and this term in, in religious, in Islamic religion, it's called uh, fidya. So basically, those who kind of skip their fasting uh, due to certain um, reasons, they can donate either money or their time to people who are in need. Next one is Ramadan starts on the same date every year. Um, which is not true. Ramadan um, start the, s the ending and starting uh, dates of Ramadan varies every year, which is due to the uh, lunar calendar, um, due to Islamic lunar calendar, which is pretty much the same as the lunar calendar, uh, which is like 24 hours and 50 or something minutes, yeah, which varies like every year. However, it should be noticed that uh, Ramadan is consistent and it's the nine. It's um, it remains the nine month of Islamic lunar calendar. Um, next one is, fasting is a great way to lose weight. Yes and no. Uh, many people do fasting because they want to lose their weight. Uh, since they don't eat uh, the entire day and they can just have their meal um, like after the, during the time of the sun set and um, uh, after the sunset and before the sunrise. So yeah, however, it, sh it should also be noticed that um, like having two big meals throughout that time can end up maybe gaining weight. So yeah, uh, next one is, it is rude for non-Muslims to eat in front of people who fast. Maybe you have heard of this um, common misconception about Ramadan that, um, for example, those who are fasting, it is rude for non-Muslim or in general for other people to, to eat in front of them, which is not that true. 
So basically the act of fasting and the entire spirit of Ramadan is about learning um, self-control, reflecting, and heightened devotion and worship to God. Um, that being said, that while it's not rude to eat in front of Muslim, um, trying to persuade or force them to give up is kind of rude. Uh, next one is absolutely no food for 30 days straight. Not exactly. Um, so th there's a set number of hours for Muslims to follow when fasting. This usually occurs between the hours of sunrise and sunset, as was already mentioned um, earlier. Outside the fasting hours, Muslims are um, allowed to eat. Um, so yeah, ha also it should be uh, noticed that because of the various time uh, difference around the world, uh, the fasting day, um, the fasting uh, duration uh, varies, like from 11 to 20 hours. For example, in the U.S., it may last from 15 to 16 hours, while in the more eastern part of Asia, for example, in Thailand or Tajikistan, um, it can last for 13 or 14 hours. So yeah, thank you, and I'm going to give the floor to my friend. So now I'm going to talk about some common misconceptions about Islam. So the, for the first one is that Muslims are all Arab and live in the Middle East. Fun fact, all of us presenting today are not Arabs. <laughs> and neither, neither of us are from the Middle East. My family's from South Asia, Zainur is from Central Asia, and Vishal is from Southeast uh, um, Europe. So this goes to say that not all Arabs are Muslim, and not all Muslims are Arab. There is a lot of diversity within the Muslim community. And that assumption about Muslims being Arab is not fully accurate, as there are Muslims from all around the world, from all walks of life. And to make that assumption that all of us are from one area or that we are all Arab is not completely true. And even within the Arab community, there is a lot of diversity, as there are Christian Arab, um, Jewish Arab, etc. Now for number two, Muslims don't believe in Jesus. A lot of people think this, and the, the amount of times that people will ask me about this is crazy, because we do believe in Jesus, but not in the same way as Christians do. We believe, as, we believe in him uh, more, of a, more as a prophet than the son of God. For number three, Islam oppresses women. What's interesting is that women in Islam were granted freedom before any civilization, um, before any of them. And a lot of what people associate this is mis associate with this misconception are tradition or culture rituals, and they're unable to distinguish what is cultural and what is religion, and that unfortunately has tainted people's perception about the role of a woman in Islam. Therefore, it has led to this misconception. In fact, in Islam, it's believed that the key to uh, heaven is below your mother's feet. That's how high of a role that um, your mother has. So number four, Muslims support terrorism and violence. That is very inaccurate as the vast majority of Muslims are moderate and peaceful. In fact, Muslims are the ones who suffer from terrorism and violence more than non-Muslims. This stereotype um, is a result of the media and how they pr perpetuate this stereotype. Um, Islam prohibits terrorism and there is a saying in the Quran that if a man murders a person, it is as if they killed all of mankind. Number five, all Muslim women wear the hijab. As you can see, I do wear the hijab, but Zainura here is not wearing the hijab. And I actually do a whole separate event um, about the hijab in February, which is International Hijab Day. So I've organized that event for three years, but for those who haven't been able to attend, basically the hijab means to cover. What that means is very subjective. And how one tends to cover will look different from how another one tends to cover. Um, there is no right way or wrong way to do the hijab, and therefore there is a lot of diversity of how one do does the hijab. And another thing is that the hijab is optional. You, don't, you are not forced to wear it. And a lot of people think that it is mandatory. While it is encouraged to wear the hijab, you can't force a person to wear it. So therefore, it is a choice that every woman has. So these are just some photos that we're going to showcase of how Ramadan is celebrated in each country. Um, this is in Pakistan. I'm not going to go into detail. These are some photos of how Ramadan is celebrated in Tajikistan, where Zainura is from. And then we're going to quickly show some videos to better showcase 
um, how Ramadan is celebrated around the world. I can feel Ramadan much better than what it is in Australia. Whether it's the large crowd or Hagia Sophia's enchanting acoustics, worshippers say it's near impossible to be here and not feel that connection. The nearly 1,500-year-old structure is a religious symbol to people worldwide and attracts visitors from around the globe. Uh, the meaning is um, without words. For me, I actually flew here from Australia. Um, just to experience this amazing event. Um, it's the first time today, like you said, in 88, say, call it nearly 100 years. And for me, I didn't want to miss it for anything. So I literally caught a flight, I landed, prayed my tarawih, alhamdulillah, and I'll be heading back to Australia tomorrow night. For almost two years, the Hagia Sophia and mosques in Turkey have been closed during Ramadan because of the coronavirus pandemic. And worshippers are eager to be back in this place of worship. Throughout the month of Ramadan, there are going to be events held in this mosque in honor of this holy symbol. Yasin Ekan, TRT World, in Istanbul. So here is a slide showcasing how Eid is celebrated in different countries. Uh, towards the, I think to your left, are some photos from how Eid is celebrated in Pakistan. Um, in the middle, there are some photos of how Eid is celebrated in Tajikistan. And then on the very right side, there are some photos of how uh, Eid is celebrated in Albania and Kosovo. And then at the bottom, I have some photos of some foods that are um, eaten during Eid from these different countries that are being represented today. So because of audio issues, um, I won't be showcasing the Eid videos, but I'm sure like you can find them online. And Eid is just a very communal celebration, and it's actually going to fall <laughs> during finals week this year. 
but we're gonna try to do something small and be able to celebrate it with like the whole campus if possible. And hopefully next year, even though I won't be here, it won't be during finals week. Maybe Vassar can do an eat event on campus. So thank you. I guess, okay, any questions or uh, comments? Dr. Jarvis. So I'm lucky enough that my family lives in Shreveport, so I get to go home every night and break it with them. But I know our local mosque is also doing like iftar dinners um, during the weekend, so like every, the whole community is welcome to come and um, break fast together. It's usually um, common to like get together with the whole community and break fast, but because of Ramadan falling into the school year, it's getting harder as everyone's busy, so they're only doing that during the weekend. Um, I know like Vassar and Zainura, they, they live on campus, they don't have the luxury of going back home to their families as they're both international students. So I know like I've been doing my best, I've been bringing them food from home <laughs> or like getting them food from the mosque or taking them grocery shopping uh, to ensure that they're not without food. Yeah, and it gets less and less lonely every year with the rise of like Muslim students on campus. Last year, I was the only one on campus that was fasting, so that was a little bit more difficult. But this year, there's, um, I think, three, two or three more Muslim students on campus, and we get together a lot more, and it's a lot, a lot less lonely. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let's see. This concludes our presentation round. Thank you so much for coming, and please uh, wait outside for food. So a few more things I wanted to say before everyone leaves. Um, I just wanted to thank Model Arab League for being here. Um, also, next Tuesday, we're going to do an iftar dinner on campus, which is open to everyone. So you guys can all come and break fast with us on the craft deck. Uh, we're going to have some food catered. Uh, we're going to have some traditional foods made. So there's going to be a lot of like different foods. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. Um, a lot of good food. And like we're excited to do that. It's going to be our second year breaking fast with the whole community. Um, it's going to be on the craft deck. If you want to come around seven, the fast doesn't break till like seven thirty-five. But like to get everyone food and situated, um, will take time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I I do want to make a mention that like me, Vasar, and Zainura were fasting, but we did provide food for you guys because like it is still a um, gathering. Or like a communal gathering and we still wanted to celebrate this event with you guys even though we can't have the food so I hope you guys enjoy it uh, they're called samosas uh, we have some veggie samosas and some chicken samosas so feel free to grab some as you guys head out but yeah thank you so much for coming out this is my last year doing this so <laughs> it's crazy to see um, but I'm excited for what the future holds for like the future Muslim students on campus and for these traditions that I got to experience during my time here, so thank you.